All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump right in. So this is uh, intended to be a Tableau dashboard demonstration, but before we get into the dashboard, there's a lot of technical concepts I need to get through. I'm about to confer to all of y'all a four-year civil engineering degree in about five minutes. And then once y'all all have that, we'll jump into the dashboard. So my name is Joe Offit. I work for Booz Allen Hamilton. Uh, my two favorite things to do are woodworking and beer brewing. And when I'm not doing that, sometimes I look and analyze data, look and look at and analyze data. So let's talk about what we're doing here today and who I support the US Air Force. So there's a lot of words on this slide. Um, we work for the Air Force Installation and Mission Support Center. But basically what you need to take away is this is responsible, this organization is responsible for everything except for flying the planes. So you're talking environmental cleanup, security forces, uh, feeding people, taking care of the airmen's children, and of course maintaining the buildings that the Air Force works in. And that's what we're going to be talking about here today. So we're going to be talking about built vertical facility infrastructure and airfield pavements. Now before I get into the presentation, I love to start with this graph because this is the, at, the, at the core as data scientists, as data people, as big data people, as Tableau vis visitors, uh, this is ultimately what we're trying to do, right, is advance along this data science maturity continuum. You'll see five points here. In the bottom left are kind of your most basic analytics. You're talking like when you're looking at data and getting averages and standard deviations and things like that. And then as you move up along that curve, you get all the way into prescriptive analytics, which is forecasting out in the future, you know, doing things like big data, machine learning, um, a lot of stuff like that. So what we want to show you today is kind of, we're not going to show you the whole journey, but how the Air Force arrived at that fifth bullet point way up in the top right of this screen at prescriptive analytics for its asset management. And ultimately, as the title of this presentation is, uh, saving taxpayer dollars, right? So let's talk about the problem that we solve for the Air Force. So there are actually 10 different data sets that we're talking about here that are completely siloed. So one thing I wanted to do before I started, but I'll do it now. So by a show of hands, how many of y'all work with or for the federal government, either military, uh, civilian workforce, or contractor related? Okay, so a lot of y'all. So, so, so a lot of y'all kind of understand what's going on and, um, and a lot of the stuff I'm gonna talk about today. So, you know, take it or leave it, the federal government has a lot of data silos. In the past, they were not looking at it from a data integration strategy. Uh, it was, you know, collecting and owning this data for this particular data set, uh, for this particular mission, and, um, you know, not utilizing it across for, for data integration. So what we had to do is we had to do holistic data analysis, and for simplicity, I grouped it into these six categories. So the Air Force has a data set on their buildings, right? So it's all the metadata related to this building. What is the building name? What is it used for? Uh, how big is it? Things like that. Also, what are the actions being taken on the buildings? Are they repairing things? How often are they repairing things? What are they repairing? How important is that asset to the Air Force mission, right? You know, again, maybe a, a politically charged statement, but some, some buildings are more important than others, and the Air Force has to take that into account. And then, of course, the Air Force is in the business of flying planes, right? So they care a lot about their airfield pavement data. And of course, things can't operate nowadays without power and internet. So their utilities data, and also they want to understand where all these assets are located around the world. So again, six different mission areas that until a few years ago were never even considered to be integrated and, and combined to be looked at holistically in one picture. So this was kind of our challenge. And so what we came up with was an integration, and this integration is what is called the IHA. So here in a little bit, you're gonna see the IHA dashboard, uh, the installation health assessment. So they wanted to develop a methodology that integrates all this data. We allows us to analyze that data and ultimately visualize the data, right? And I'm gonna get into more of this in a little bit, but when you think of assets, ultimately what you wanna do is maintain it at the lowest life cycle cost. Buildings last for a long time, right? You're gonna spend money on them throughout the life of, of you know, their useful life. So minimizing all those, costs, all those costs across the 30 years, the 50 years, whatever it may be, uh, is very important. So again, now I'm starting to beat a dead horse, but integrating the data, analyzing the data, and visualizing the data was super important to the Air Force. 
So here's what we had to do, create an analytical platform that integrates all this, analyzes it, and visualizes it. And since we started down this Tableau journey, our, the Air Force also said, well, while we're at it, let's add to this shopping list of all these needs and wants. This ultimate IHA viz should accomplish three things. The first thing is it should provide high level strategic insight into decisions that policymakers, you know, all the way up to the general Pentagon level and over even into the congressional side, how are those decisions impacting down to individual buildings? Secondly, we want to educate and communicate this out to the field, so out to each of the installations. So as these high level decisions are being made, how do we also take this analysis and then communicate it to individual stakeholders who only compare, who only care about a little bit of the whole data set? And then finally, there's always a big concern on data accuracy. How do we reassure stakeholders that the data is accurate and reliable? So while we're building this viz, we had to keep these three things in mind. And this single viz we had to create had to accomplish all three of these. So it was a pretty big task. So I'm going to jump into Tableau. But before we do, uh, I'm going to tell you what we're looking at today. So there's 80 major Air Force installations. In those 80 major Air Force installations, there's about 55,000 buildings. Within those buildings, there are systems. When I say systems, I mean things like the HVAC, the electrical, the plumbing, the roof, the foundation, the walls, things like that. So there's 288,000 different systems in all those buildings, and all those systems are made up com of components. When I say components, I mean things like the compressor on the AC unit that's you know, air conditioning the building. So we're looking at 3.4 million data points, and for airfield pavement data, looking at about 920 million square feet of pavement. So how do we show all this data in a single visual? Let's go ahead and jump over into Tableau. So I like to start here. This is actually not part of the official visual, but we like showing this because for about 10 years, the Air Force has been saying the same message. There, we are not getting enough money to fund all of our buildings. There's a huge requirement, and you are not funding us to what we need. So the analogy we always use is a car. About 10 years ago, the Air Force owned a lot of cars, right? And so in order to save money, the Air Force said, you know what, we're going to stop doing oil changes. We're going to stop doing tire rotations. We're going to stop doing air filter changeouts. We buy the car, and we're done with it, and that's just what it's going to be. Well, the problem is all those costs, those deferred costs, have caught up to the Air Force, and that's what this number represents. This is the deferred cost maintenance backlog of the US Air Force. So essentially, right now, if the, if the Senate and Congress were to sign a single check over to the Air Force to fix everything, they'd have to write a check for this amount. Now, obviously, that's never going to happen, right? So how does the Air Force get after this problem? So let's jump into the real visual. By the way, if we sat here and watched this all day, it would grow at $3.1 million a day, over $20 million a week that it grows by. All right, so this was the first visual we, we created. And before I continue, I want to apologize because I violated the first rule of data viz. I made it really complicated. But I think once I explain it, it becomes really impactful and really insightful into the information that it conveys. So we'll stop at the, start at the top. So the top represents every one of those 55,000 buildings and that 920 million square feet of pavement is represented in this top graph. Each building is a pixel or a piece of pavement. So as I hover over any of these pixels, I can see immediately that this happens to be an ops building at Columbus Air Force Base. And I see some other related data that I'll get to here in a second. So again, this was never done before in the Air Force. Never were they able to call something like this as quickly as, they, as, as Tableau allows it to do. You'll see some organization. If you're not familiar with the Air Force, the Air Force is organized in what are called major commands. So going along the left side, those bars are the different major commands of the US Air Force, starting with Air Combatant Command at the top, and it just goes in alphabetical order down to US Air Force's Europe at the bottom of that bar. So this is important for a couple of reasons, right? So as the major commands control some of the money, they like to know who has more assets than, than the other major commands, right? So, so that immediately, that was some insightful visual that, again, had never been done before. So let's talk about the color. So going back to the car analogy and oil changes. So if you buy a car and you're doing your regularly scheduled maintenance and your car was represented as one of these pixels, it would be a green pixel. 
It does not mean it's a new car. It could be a five-year-old car, a 10-year-old car, but what it means is you're properly maintaining it, and over the life of that car, you're spending, in theory, the least amount of money because major repairs are not popping up. Again, in theory. As you deviate away from that scheduled maintenance and you skip oil changes, skip tire rotations, that pixel slowly changes to red. So red does not necessarily mean an old building, does not necessarily mean a falling apart building, but it means you're taking significant risk in having a significant repair or replacement requirement in that building. So that is what the Air Force calls condition index. It's a scale of zero to 100, and green pixels are on the upper side of the condition index, red pixels are on the, on the lower side. So the last variable you need to know about is what is called MDI, Mission Dependency Index. That's another variable that's a scale from zero to 100 that rates the importance of that building to the Air Force. Technically, the scale only goes up to 99, nothing is a 100, but if a building is a 99, it is the most important building in the Air Force and you know, must be maintained at all costs. If it's, you know, typically it doesn't go below a 30, in theory it goes to zero, but it doesn't go below a 30. If it's something like a 30, it's the roof or a gazebo out in a park somewhere that if it falls down, you know that's unfortunate, but it's not gonna stop the planes from flying and taking off, right? Now these pixels are organized by that MDI description that I just said. So within each bar, the most important assets are on the left side of each bar, and the least important assets are on the right. So as I hover over the left side assets, you'll see things like control towers, pavements, um, you know, a lot of taxiways, things like that. As I get into the middle, you'll see a lot of warehouses and storage and things that are important, but not necessarily immediately mission requirement. And then over here on the right, you'll see like concession stands, recreational pavilions. So right off the bat, you can see a few things, right? You want to avoid orange on the left side. The Pacific Air Force happens to have a lot of orange on the left side. They've taken a lot of risk in um, some mission important assets. So this is the current status of the US Air Force. That's great. But what about what's happening in the future? As budgets change, as policies change, how does this change and how do we ultimately save the taxpayers money? So down below, I'll walk you through these two graphs real quick. The blue graph is super boring, super boring. But in my opinion here in about 15 minutes, it'll be the most interesting graph on the page. Um, this is the dollars spent per year on buildings by the US Air Force. At the time of our analysis, it was $2.1 billion a year. So right now, the Air Force is getting $2.1 billion a year. They're spending every penny possible because they have so many pixels that are not green. This red bar graph down below is that debt clock that we just saw, the deferred maintenance backlog. So when we started this analysis, it was at 23.9 billion. As a reminder, that debt clock is now at 25.3 billion. And if it continues on its current trajectory, here in 30 years, it'll be 70 and a half billion dollars that the Air Force would need to get out of its current problem. So but there's a disparity between the upper half of this dashboard and the lower half of this dashboard. The lower half is a 30 year look. The upper half is 2018 only. So what can we do about that? So keep your eye on the top graph and also on this number right here. So I'm gonna click play and what we can actually do is forecast and simulate how the Air Force prioritizes its investments and where it sends its money. And what you see is predominantly the green pixels turn yellow, the yellow pixels turn orange, and the orange pixels turn red, and the red pixels just catch on fire and you know disappear. But what you also see is something really, really interesting and it kind of makes sense once, once I explain it. You see this kind of cigarette burn effect that when we first visualized this, we were like, whoa, what is, what is that? What is going on? And I'm not gonna get into all the details, but currently how the Air Force prioritizes its investments and its assets every year is about an eight variable equation. One of those variables though is that MDI variable that I referenced. Again, remember, highest MDI, most important on the left, lowest MDI, least important on the right. So that variable shows that it is driving going to stuff that is mission important. And now there's, there becomes a balancing act, right? So of course the Air Force needs to accomplish its mission. And so it does need to fund its high priority stuff. But what it's doing is it's taking huge risk in, in all of its low MDI assets. Obviously this is not sustainable, right? So what can we do about it? So we went back to our analysis team and said, well, what if we throw more money at the problem? So I'm gonna reset the clock here. 
and this is going to be with an extra $500 million a year. So this will kind of give it away, but let's look at the bottom two graphs first. So instead of 2.1 billion, it's 2.6 billion. Again, a very boring graph right now. The backlog started at 23. Now it only grows to 58. If you recall from the previous page, it grows to 70.5. But let's press, press play and see what happens. And it basically does exactly what we would expect it to do. It follows the exact same path. The only difference now is that it's just not quite as extreme. So an extra $500 million, you still kind of see that cigarette burn kind of going from the right to the left. But things stay oranger, yellower, maybe not greener, but, but, but definitely not as red, right? And so we see after 30 years, the Air Force current prioritization scheme throwing an extra $500 million at the problem doesn't necessarily solve it. So then we got asked the question, well, how much money solves it, right? What, what can we do? So I'm gonna reset the clock one more time and the blue, blue, blue bar graph and the red bar graph kind of give it away, but as I press play, this is an extra $1.5 billion. So instead of the $2 billion they're currently getting, this is $3.6 billion. So it's almost a doubling of budget. And we see what we would expect. We see this backlog graph rise, more or less stay flat, but then it drops. And if this simulation went out a few more years, we would assume it reaches zero. The blue bar graph is still super boring, doesn't matter. Flat all the way across, we're spending every dollar we have, and what we see is kind of what we expect. Pixels turn green. Now this is great, and Tableau is awesome, but I, I don't need Tableau for anyone to say, more money solves your problem, right? Like that's, that's a, I can do that analysis in about five seconds. More money solves all of our problems. So what else can we do? So we went to, back to the drawing board and said, you know what, let's get rid of the whole asking for more money thing. What else can we do? So we did a different type of scenario. Now I changed the top graph on you slightly. It's now grouped by that MDI variable, how important that building is to the Air Force is now grouped by the MDI decile. So the most important buildings are on top, least important buildings are on bottom, but still within each bar, the most important buildings are on the left and least important buildings are on the right. Now, you're probably looking at that pink graph and saying, oh, that's really interesting. Backlog actually flatlines and even starts to decrease. What are we doing? So again, we went back to the model and we said, well, what if the Air Force got out of the business of everything except for flying planes? So you need, you need the airfield, you need the control tower, you need a couple hangars, but everything else we just stop funding. And the, and the Air Force just goes and acquires it from the local municipality or anything like that. Again, no one in the Air Force is advocating for that, so don't go get me in trouble, but this was just a thought exercise, right? So what would happen if? So I'm gonna press play and we're gonna watch about 10 years of this takeoff, and for the first 10 years, we see exactly what we would expect. We define this basically as everything above an 80 MDI is good, everything below an 80 MDI we don't wanna be in the business of anymore. But right there at 2029, let me back up. So here about 2028, 2029, everything above an 80 is green. Everything below an 80 has basically run to failure and they're putting out fires all the time. But then the model did something really, really interesting because we told the model do not fund anything below an 80 MDI. And so as I press play here, we see this kind of green creeping in effect into the 70 MDI decile. And I think this ends somewhere in the mid 60s is where it stops after 30 years. And so all of the ops research guys, all the analysts kind of, we sat back and said, whoa, what's going on there? So we got a big think tank together and we looked at this and we said, well, well why is this happening? Because the code is good. The code says do not fund anything below an 80 MDI. And so what we realized was Going back to what I said on that bullet on that side, lowest life cycle cost. If you're properly maintaining your car, if you're doing your oil changes, getting your tires rotated, that car can last 100,000 miles, 150,000, 200,000 miles plus, right? If you don't get an oil change, it's possible your car breaks down at 40,000 miles, right? And then you have to go buy another car. Well, what happened is after about 10 years, the model got everything in those top two bands back to good. So it's back to its proper maintenance life cycle. And then it ran out of stuff to spend on. It's not gonna go do an oil change every day on a car. It said, I did my oil change, I'm gonna wait another 5,000 miles. So what do we do next? So at 2029, it said, hey, I got this money that you're giving me. 
I'm gonna go spend it on other stuff even though you told me not to. So every single thing is getting funded in those top two bars and the model still found money to go after everything got good to get after the other stuff. So again, we iterated and iterated and for the sake of time, I'm not gonna go through the 40 other visuals we created and other thought, you know, thought pieces that we did, but we ultimately arrived at a final visual. And this is where I think the blue bar is the most interesting. Basically, long story short, we asked for a little bit of money for a few years. We changed how we prioritized our assets. And for the, just the sake of sensitivity, I won't go into that. Uh, but we changed the prioritization schema of what assets get funded. Bottom line, it was more of an ROI driven approach as opposed to a whatever everyone thinks is important. I don't care what the civil engineers say. And then we're also gonna get rid of 5% of the buildings. So there's a lot of stuff out there that is unneeded and the military says, hey, we wanna get rid of this stuff, so let's get rid of 5% of the buildings. And again, the, the blue bar graph and the red bar graph kinda of give it away, but as I press play, what we see is the bars start to shrink because we're getting rid of pixels, right? We're getting rid of buildings. And a lot of those red pixels that stay ultimately get removed and divested of. Um, and what we see is a mostly green graph with a few red outliers, which again, I'm not gonna go into, but that's basically a bad data um, flag is what's happening there. Um, but this is where the blue graph is the most interesting graph. So the backlog goes away after about 10 years. So all that huge $25 billion clock that's going up goes away. But here's why the blue graph is most interesting. So we're giving the model $3 billion a year. So an extra billion dollars on top of what they currently get. But by 2028, or 2029, excuse me, the model can't spend all that money. We're giving the model in 2029 $3.1 billion. But again, it's not going to go on the other extreme and start doing those oil changes early and saying, hey, we're going to wait. We're going to wait till next year. We're going to wait till the year after that. And so what you see, what this blue bar graph represents after 2029 is the lowest life cycle cost to maintain the U.S. Air Force asset infrastructure. And it undulates, right? Right. So if you think about like a FedEx or a UPS, if they had 55,000 trucks, they don't all get oil changes on the exact same day. You know, some years a lot of them get oil changes, some years almost none of them get oil changes, right? So this is kind of where the Air Force has settled. So if you go back to the PowerPoint slide, you'll remember that there were three bullet points on the requirement for the Viz. Help strategic leaders figure out what's going on. This is what this has accomplished. But the next one was, how do we communicate this out to the field? If I'm the commander at a local installation, I don't care about 90% of these pixels. So how do we help the local commanders understand what's going on as well? So we made the map dashboard and we were super excited when 10.5 came out because you're gonna see some 10.5 features here uh, that we could not do before that. But we have a sort of a standard map. Every dot represents an Air Force installation. The color of that dot is the average condition, the average score of all the buildings on that base. Down below you have those major commands again with the overall average condition of that major command. Now it's kind of hard to see, but you might see a green line, green dotted line right here. Again, I'm not gonna get into math, I don't have time. Uh, you know, if you wanna go grab beers and talk for four hours, I'd be happy to jump into it for, with you. But that green dotted line, if you're at that line on an average, that basically means you're operating at lowest life cycle cost. So if you deviate either above or below that line, you are spending more money on your assets than you have to. So we can see that all the major commands and that white line is the overall Air Force average, including the entire Air Force, is spending more money than they have to currently. But again, this is the entire Air Force. We want to help out one individual installation commander. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to filter down to what is the Air Education and Training Command. So I'm based out of San Antonio, Texas. Uh, so as you notice, I filter. Again, we're all, we all love Tableau, so I'm not going to get into the Tableau uh, you know, little actions and tricks like changing from MAGCOMs to in individual installations. But what we see here is a filter, and I'm gonna go ahead and drill into Joint Base San Antonio. So I'm gonna play the role today of the commander of Joint Base San Antonio. And so as I click Joint Base San Antonio, we see two new graphs pop up. That top right one is probably harder to discern what it is, but basically that is South Texas. That is the five installations that encompass Joint Base San Antonio. Pretty hard to see though, so let's zoom in. So I work off at Lackland Air Force Base. So as I click Lackland, we see a zoom in into Lackland and we can kind of, you can probably see that that's a runway in the top right. 
but all those dots are kind of hard to see. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more. And what we see, again, maybe still kind of hard to see, are those individual shapes of every individual building on the Air Force installation. And if I were to click any Air Force installation, it would do this exact same thing. The other thing that happened is down below, we have a building type graph pop up. So this is the categorical average of all of our admin facilities. This is our airfields, hospital, medical, so on and so forth, all the way over to utility and ground. And so we can see the average condition, condition of the buildings just at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. So if I'm the commander, I see, hey, supply and admin facilities, I got a problem in, do I want to go address it? And additionally, you can see what's going on up here. And as I mentioned, the 10.5 rollout, we love the Vizen tooltip. So those two graphs you've been seeing for the entire Air Force are now loaded by building. So the blue bar still represents the funding of that individual building, and the red bar represents that deferred maintenance backlog. And here it's easier to see the relationship between the two. So as a big investment happens, the backlog drops to zero or significantly, and then you can see it growing again until another, another investment happens. And similarly here, we can press play. So as broad policy and strategic announcements are made, individual installation commanders can see what happens. So this is the baseline scenario. So this is the don't do anything scenario. And what we can see both at the top and at the bottom is most buildings go red. Now the Air Force is not gonna let its runways fail and that's important. So we see the runway network basically stay green. Some of it drops into orange for a little bit, but then it gets repaired and it goes back into the green category. But this is kind of where we're at. And so again, they can filter and communicate on any of these scenarios. So that's about all I have for you today. I know I'm running out of time, but I just wanted to say uh, thank you. And if you have any questions, I will hang out afterwards. Um, and again, if you don't want to ask me right now or don't have time, feel free to grab my email address, shoot me an email. Um, I have business cards as well. But again, thank each of you for your time.